Hello and welcome back to my craft room. I've got another little slow stitching project using just some very small scraps of fabric um, and I'm going to be using fabrics from my bazaar scrap packs. Let me show you what I've been up to. Um, so this is just a little dinky pouch. I'm going to call it a yo-yo pouch. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it because I started with one of these little Suffolk puffs or yo-yos. Suffolk puff pouch just isn't so catchy is it <laughs> and the reason that this came about partly because I've just been on a mission to see how many things I can make with the contents of I've now got six scrap packs from Bazaar so they were reclaimed fabrics I'm going to link to I'm going to put this on the Bazaar playlist if you're interested in um, finding out more about it just check out that playlist because I'll have all include videos where I've opened packages from Bazaar and where I've made other projects using all these fabrics but of course you can these projects are ideal for using up any kind of little scrap fabrics you might have um, these are some of the other things I've been making uh, <laughs> all kinds of things so this partly came about because I'd been watching Christine of Create and Craft with Christine. I'll link to her below. And she showed she was doing um, a project. She was making beads out of little mini Suffolk puffs or yo-yos. And, um, and she had a gadget. Now, I, I can't resist a crafting tool. And I had seen these before and thought, yeah, you don't really need that. They're so simple to make. But actually watching Christine use it, I realised this, this little gadget makes the job so much easier and you get so much more consistent results. So I, I went for a slightly larger one. This is a four, 45 millimetre, four and a half centimetre or one and three quarter inch finished size. So where you can see the size it ends up. And it makes it very easy. I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute. I'm just, I'm so chuffed to got this. I, I thought they're, they're quite pricey actually for a bit of plastic. But thinking about it, I'm never going to have to buy another one, am I? I might want more in different sizes. <laughs> so this whole thing was just made with one piece of fabric. This is what I've got left of it. It was one of these strange, strangely shaped pieces of fabric that you get part of a garment, probably. What I'm going to do is cut a little piece of film in, in a minute. I'll cut in a little piece of film where I started showing the making of this just because I wanted to show you what I was starting off with and how I approach using some of these oddly shaped pieces of fabrics that you end up with in the scrap packs. It's one of the things I love the most about them. It's the challenge of, of using up these pieces. I'm going to stop this now and I'll show you what I started with and I'll come back and show you some more details of what I've ended up with. Hopefully this project has just worked out exactly as I've got it in my head and I've just shown you the <laughs> I've just shown you the finished result and I'm really happy with it. I just thought I'm going to film this a little bit as I go along um, just to show you how it came together. So I'm starting off with this piece of random fabric taken from some kind of a garment from one of the um, bizarre scrap packs. Um, I love this piece where you've got this is all one printed piece of fabric and then it's kind of there's like um like a facing to this edge made in this different kind of contrasting fabric. I really like that. I think I'm going to end up with that on the inside because this is the wrong side of the fabric. That's going to be sides of my of my little bag. If you're watching this video you'll already know how this is going to turn out. So I've got this strip that I've cut off this end of the fabric. I'll keep this, I can I can keep this bit for something else so I can put that out of the way now. I'm going to make this the bottom. So now I just love the look of that. So I need to work out roughly how long this needs to be to wrap right around my circle and give me a bit of a seam allowance. Mm. Okay it's about there. Cut this piece off and save that for something else further down the line. And then initially I was thinking I would just turn a hem over here like that, which I could, I could do. I've got this little scrap of ribbon still so I'm thinking I could make an edge with that. I think that would look quite nice. This was a ribbon rose in one of the packs and I've already taken some of it and used it for another project. What did I use it for? I used it in parts of this one. You can see a little bit of it there. So I don't need to turn that over. Instead I'm going to I'm going to bind it with this ribbon. So I will stitch I must just cut a length of this off. I will stitch this all the way along there where that straight line is and then I will turn it up and over like 
this turn it under and stitch it on the other side so that will give me a nice neat edge then I'm going to do a little bit of decorative stitching into these squares that are on this fabric because I just I can't resist <laughs> I mean they're just begging for it or they even if I just do something simple like little cross stitches in here or perhaps cross stitches in one and um, and li a little uh, French knot or something in the middle of, of the alternate squares something like that then I will stitch it all the way around here do a seam and then what I'm thinking is rather than I was thinking initially a drawstring but it's quite small for that what I'm thinking at the moment is instead of that imagine this is my my bag when it's all stitched together and I've got the base on I would just put a little button or bead on the inside of the back there and I'll make a little button hole here and it will button together to fasten it I think that would be really cute and a nice way to use some lovely little buttons because I've got so many buttons or oh, I could just do it could be a popper instead and the button could simply be a decorative thing depends on how much I feel like doing a buttonhole <laughs> So what I'm going to do now, and I, ju I just wanted to film this stage of it so you could see what I was, what my starting point was, and then I'm going to come back and show you the finished thing, and I'll and I'll I'll do one from scratch with another piece of fabric anyway. But I just I really wanted you to see the the piece that I started with, just to show you how you can use this. Like if this was an end of a sleeve or something, just to show you the kind of thing you can do with it. What I'm going to do now is stitch that all the way along the top, turn it over turn it inside and hem it on the inside to get to make a neat, nice neat binding I'll show you that when it's all done on the on the finished bag and I'm going to do some decorative stitching on here I will take that downstairs this evening and enjoy doing that it's this kind of this kind of um, pattern fabric is just begging to be stitched on isn't it I could do stitching along all of these outlines as well so yeah it's another reason why I wanted to show you it now just so you can see the difference I could put beads in the middle of some of them too couldn't I there's lots of little beads that came in that pack actually lots of these little brass beads I could put one in the middle of each of the red squares say and, a, and stitch across in the middle of the grey squares something like that. that could be really fun I'll do that first while it's all flat obviously probably do a little blanket stitch all the way around to attach this to the circle at the base and then I will seam it together I'll probably just do a I don't know I haven't decided yet how I will finish that off because I don't want a frayed edge on the inside if I didn't love this on the inside I probably would just put another piece of fabric on the back so that you wouldn't get so all the seams were hidden on the inside but because I want this to be visible still I am going to end up with this seam so I think oh, maybe I shouldn't have cut that off yet I think maybe I need to allow enough to make a little French seam I'll decide about that later and I will I will share that with you when, it, when it's all done. I'll get this finished this evening and then tomorrow I can come back and make this video properly. But yes, as I say, I just wanted to show you my starting point. Going back to my previous future self. <laughs> this is what I've ended up with. I added some, I started off with my Suffolk Puff. I added embroidery into the, so you can see you would have just seen in that little clip that the fabric I started with was quite plain, but I've just added some so yeah you can see there I've just done some straight stitching with stranded embroidery floss there just to make it a little bit more interesting I've added some of the beads and the beads came in the scrap pack as well scrap packs I put some uh, just this is just decorative there I didn't, didn't need it it was already seamed anyway <laughs> and some blanket stitching around the bottom as well and um, inside I, I actually French seamed it on the inside so I wouldn't have any raw edges um, you can't really see that lovely bit that I liked on the inside now but I know it's there <laughs> and I just closed it with a button like that but actually you could do a little handle you could make a drawstring or something instead if you wanted and this is ideal for making it for using as a little gift bag just put a few coins in there or to keep little items like my little dressmaking clips in there um, or I did think just now I could actually put a little lavender bag in there I think it would have to be in something enclosed like this because obviously this isn't uh, it would come out here <laughs> but put it inside a little gauze bag like this pop the little bag of lavender in there 
and maybe yeah just maybe just even have a hanging loop instead and you could hang that on a coat hanger i like the look of this and in fact you could actually add a bead there or a little tassel or something i think you could do all kinds of things with this little basic shape and it's essentially just starting with a with a suffolk puff or yo-yo and then putting a cylinder around it to fit just a little cute doodad really um if you push that little suffolk puff in a little bit it will stand stable on a table so we can, so like with these other little pouches that i've been making you could they would make lovely little table gifts i think um i don't get crackers and things anymore because i don't like the the waste i just don't think it's very environmentally friendly but i love the idea of giving gifts that on a table and just putting up the table it's something that people could take home and keep and use again as well isn't it so i like that anyway what i'm going to do now is start making a new one and the fabric I'm going to use this time is this one and it doesn't have to be all one piece of fabric if you've got smaller scraps to use um, that's fine as well just adapt to what you've got first thing I'm going to do is make my make my little Suffolk puff using this ingenious little gadget okay I'm going to use this sort of thicker end of this the what slightly wider end of the fabric because I really want it to be mostly this but because I'm going to use the, the wrong side of the fabric I don't think it's going to be too obvious anyway so put that where I want it and then put this piece inside. <coughs> Need to make sure the little notches line up. It seems to have just clipped into place fine. And I'm just going to roughly chop round it just to one side for a minute. Obviously, if you haven't got one of these makers, these little gadgets, just do it in the normal way, you know. I think I'm going, I've decided I'm going to double up my thread just to be on the safe side so I can pull on it without worrying it's going to break. <laughs> and you do get instructions, but it all seemed fairly sort of obvious, really. Especially having watched Christine using it first. Okay, so what you do now is you start, you, you put the needle in from the disc side, you fold this edge over as you go, and you've got to make sure you start on this end of one of these little notches because you want your stitches to go across here. You don't want them to go between these little um, arc shapes, you want them to go across the little arc shapes. So I, I want my first one to come here. So I'm going to put it in so it comes out there. But I'm going from the disc side. I'm just going to keep holding this edge over as I go. So now I'm going to go in there. Keep holding this down. Go in the next one. one so you can see my, my stitch each time is going across that little arc shape it's not going in between because if I, if I if I put the stitch in between here then the it's just this does make it so easy you just haven't got to think it's not awkward you're not trying to it just feels really easy and you're sort of guaranteeing a nice even gather with all the edges turned under which is really nice I could get so addicted to making little uh, separate puffs or yo-yos <laughs> I might have a go at making my, make a whole load of them and, and make one of the old-fashioned separate puff quilts that'd be quite fun okay um, so then when you come back to this is where I started then you just overlap by one but make sure you don't go they do point out you want to go back through the same hole but kind of don't go down through the middle of that knot that, that where you first started make sure you just go slightly to one side of it because otherwise it's not going to gather up for you so i'm just going to overlap by one leave that all on my needle and now i'm going to pop the two pieces apart see that's where if i'd have stitched between these little arc shapes instead of across them it, it wouldn't have wanted to come apart 
and take out my my disc part there we go and this is all ready to gather up with all the edges turned in marvellous gather that all up that Christine she's such an enabler <laughs> we enable each other in all honesty <laughs> there we go the cutest little Suffolk puff brilliant I could sit and make those all day um, and you can of course with these you know you can leave them fairly open you can have raw edges as well if you want to not turn them under but um or you can put like a contrasting inside all kinds of things you can do add a bead um, but I'm just going to do a traditional I'm going to pull it up fairly close because I want to, this to look closed um, like my like this one but yeah you could add a bead a tassel uh, put a button here that'd be quite a cute idea maybe I should try a button on this one so I've got a little bag of buttons here button in the middle that could look quite cute couldn't it maybe that way around I'm just making a little um, little stitch to anchor it all now just make a little knot lose the thread inside there we go so that's the base of my little pouch now I'm ready to make the sides and the first thing I'm going to do is just trim this up just tidy this off a bit here um, so the that's the probably the closest I'm going to trim I'm going to trim to that all the way along just follow that white line that'll be the easiest thing there we go and I'm hoping now that this will be long enough to go around my circle I think it will be just ideally I want to be able to do a French seam again but it's not going to be a lot of room for that I've used the wrong side of the fabric for my Suffolk puff for the base and you can see that although that stripe is there it really doesn't matter because this is the side that's going to show um, so I think I'm going to make this the right side for um, for the sides of my little pouch because I want to embroider into these flowers flower shapes here I think that'd be really fun um, so I'm thinking I'm going to fold it in half it was about the height I wanted yeah and I'm going to bind the edge I'll find something else to bind the edge with possibly go back and use a little bit more of this that came from the fabric I made this one with I could use a bit of that to bind the edge or a little piece of ribbon or whatever it doesn't it doesn't really matter too much at this stage okay I found another little piece of this in that um in that pack so I'm gonna I'm gonna use another piece of this don't need very much it's just to make a just to finish the edge so I've got this folded together this is right sides out either side could be my outside really but I'm going to go for this one because these look fun to stitch into okay I'm just going to run a small neat running stitch all along that edge all three thicknesses quite near to the edge oh I smell that lavender now lovely so we are famous for lavender here in Norfolk. Unfortunately, what you can smell in the air at the moment here is rapeseed rather than lavender. I hate the smell. I use rapeseed oil all the time. Love it, but uh, the smell of the of it when it's in flower. Ugh. Horrible smell. I 
think he called it cornola oil in uh, America. It's got this vivid, intensely yellow, unreal looking yellow flower. And when it's in flower, well, it stinks. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just doing a very small, well not very small, pretty small running stitch. It doesn't need to be any strength in this seam, so I'm not going to worry about doing a back stitch. Of course, you could very quickly whip along here with a sewing machine if you wanted to. But for me, that's not the point. Oh, I've just forgot to press record again there. So what I've done is I've, <laughs> I've finished stitching all the way along, trimmed off the, the excess, pressed the whole piece back like that and used my seam roller to press this really nice and flat. Sorry for the squeak. And now I'm just going to turn under a tiny, tiny edge because I haven't really given myself enough here. I should have cut this just a tiny bit wider, but it'll be fine. Press that right down. I've done that and I might need to trim this seam even a little bit more. Let's just do that. It's a very narrow little little seam anyway, but let's trim it right back. So I've only it's only about oh two eighths of an inch at the most. Three mils, I don't know, something like that. There you go. And now I'm just going to turn it over again like that so that I've got a nice neat finish there and the raw edges of this main piece are all enclosed. So I've just basically I've just done binding on the edge. I'm just over explaining it for the sake of anybody that's not done any stitching before because I think this is a nice little practice piece for someone who's just starting out you know you can practice a lot of different techniques on here um, make something as nice and cute you can give as a gift use up some little scraps some techniques but it's simple enough I think for a beginner just using these little clips rather than pins I just think they're gonna hold it all together without bending it out of shape, out of shape too much we don't want to get bent out of shape do we and now so I left my needle all threaded up I'm just gonna do a little a little kind of over stitch fasten this down so I'll do a little double stitch here this isn't going to show it all being closed in the in the seam in a minute so I'm just going to take a tiny tiny couple of threads there I don't want it to show from the outside oh, I really hope this is going to focus tiny couple of threads I could equally well do uh, perhaps a ladder stitch. I just want something that's going to secure that edge down reasonably neatly. Reasonably neatly and securely, but it won't show on the outside. Right, I finished uh, doing that. Just trim that little bit off. So this is what's going to be the, that's, this is going to wrap around the Suffolk puff that I'm going to use as my base. I don't think I've got room to do a French seam this time. Maybe if I do a very small one, <laughs> otherwise I'll bind the seam with something else. But anyway, so what I want to do now is pretty it up um, and add some embroidery here. So I've got a couple of embroidery flosses. 
my favourite little chenille needle. I like these because they got they little small nimble little needles with a sharp point and a big eye and um, I use them a lot. I'm just going to use double uh, uh, two strands of um, embroidery floss um, and what I shall do is just look at the pattern that's here so I might do um, some lazy daisies around here with some French knots in the centre of each flower um, you can see there's little dots in the pattern here. I might put French French knots along there. I might run some lines of running stitch. Um, I could do a bit of fly stitch here where these leaves are. But let's start with that. Let's start with that, shall we? <laughs> following the pattern that's already there. Fly, fly stitch, Y stitch, I always get them confused. I need to finish doing my dictionary of stitches with Christine. I'll learn what all these stitches are then. So you can see, yeah, that's just, whoops, I've just followed the pattern that's already there, but it's just giving it a bit of added um, texture there. Um, and I think perhaps rather than try and weave in the ends, I'll just run a little line of running stitch along here. I should have started there probably, but that bit will be kind of lost in the seam anyway, so let's not worry about it. And I'll just run a little line of running stitches along here, just following that line of the fabric. Go. and now I'm ready to do another little leaf I can just sit and spend hours just kind of embellishing the existing pattern in the fabric with <laughs> extra stitches it's a bit like doodling in a or, um, in a, in a colouring book or, or whatever it's kind of you don't have to think too hard you're just taking your needle and thread for a walk <laughs> okay so you can kind of see where I'm going there um, so I'm going to do these. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want this video to get super long. So I'm just going to do um, a whole lot of decorative stitching on here. I'll come back and show you how it looks, and then what I'm going to do the next stage of, of putting it together. I finished doing a bit of embroidery there. I decided I didn't really like those French knots actually in the end. I wish I hadn't done them, but um, I've done them now. I haven't got the heart to cut them out, so uh, they're staying. <laughs> I much prefer it actually with just a straight stitch in because I always like that. I don't, I'm not particularly enamoured of the flowers either, but hey ho, we've done it now. Never mind, let's move on. It did occur to me as well that it would have made more sense unless I was just doing straight stitching, in which case it's fine. But doing embroidery like this that involves a bit of a messy backside, it would have been better to have done that before I folded the fabric and doubled it up and put the edging on. So, future reference. <laughs> So um, I think this is just about long enough to go around this circle and um, it has worked out almost exactly four and a half centimetres in diameter. That's pretty spot on actually. So if you use the old pi um, formula, 3.14 times the 4.5 centimetres comes out 14 and a half. This is just over 15 and a half so I've got a very scant seam allowance if I want to do a French seam which I do because if I just join it like this I'm going to have raw edges I could just do raw edges and blanket stitch them I suppose but I'm going to try doing a French seam because I just think it would look tidier and if the diameter of my tube ends up a little bit tighter than it needs to be 
I'll just adjust the way I, I stitch the um, Suffolk puff inside. I think it will, yeah, I think it'll be fairly forgiving. So that's what I'm going to do. So the next thing is just to sew these two edges together with the right sides out opposite to what you would usually do with a normal seam where you put right sides together. This is going to be my top edge, that needs to be my tidier edge. <laughs> uh, let's just use some of this. And I'm just giving myself a very, very narrow seam allowance. But the thing is that doing um, a French seam like this, I'd clip it right back to a very narrow margin anyway. So. Again, you could whip along this in just a few seconds with a sewing machine, but I just most of the time can't be bothered getting my machine out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, turn it inside out. And I'm going to sew this seam together again. Press it right down. So I'm going to stitch it so that, that the raw edges of my first seam are all enclosed. So And that'll make me a nice tidy seam with no raw edges. So now I have got now I have got the right sides together. I'm going to try and make it quite a narrow seam because I know I've not got a lot of leeway. <laughs> but I need, do need to make sure I've enclosed all of those raw edges. Let's just double over there a bit where this is like now quadruple thickness or even. I don't know how many, I've lost track of how many layers of fabric there are there. Okay, now, now I'll just go back into a normal little back stitch again. So it's a handy little seam this, it's just kind of almost um, binding itself as it goes along really. <laughs> Very handy in situations like this where you don't want any raw edges. And um, I could also then put the seam down flat and over stitch it down just to keep it really flat. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's do a little ladder stitch here. So just pick up a little bit of, of that side and then go back up to this side, pick up a little bit, move along. So if I'd have done all of my embroidery before I folded this tube together, you wouldn't see any of the messy kind of backside of the embroidery at all. So I will remember that for the next one. It's obvious really. It's a bit bulky at this end but I'll do my best. There we go. It's a little bit bulky there, but it'll be okay. So then I've got that seam, but there's there's no raw edges at all. And as I say, if I'd have done the uh, silly, really, if I'd have done the embroidery before I folded the two halves together, there wouldn't be any mess there at all. That's pretty good. 
So now I just want to attach this little tube to my Suffolk Puff. Well, I'm just going to start an end, <laughs> lose my end inside the Suffolk Puff there. Make myself a little double stitch to secure it. And then I'm just going to ladder stitch this on just to attach it and then I'll do a blanket stitch like I did before and that will make it a bit sort of more secure. And I like the decorative uh, finish of that. So I'm just going to go all the way around picking up a little bit of the puff or yo-yo and a little bit of the tube. Hopefully it will all fit together beautifully. If not, I'll adjust it a bit as I go along. <gasps> I'm doing it the wrong way round. I wanted that on the outside, didn't I? Oh, well, shall I do one with... Hmm. No, I do like the look of... No, no it's going to happen. I'm going to have to unpick it. I'm going to start that again and I'll come back when I'm stitched on. <laughs> I'm getting tired. <laughs> Can you believe it? I got halfway around stitching it on again and realised I stitched it on the wrong end. <laughs> so this is third attempt. But hey ho, we got there in the end. So I'm just coming I'm just coming to the end of it now. And uh it's fitting pretty much exactly. <laughs> so I got lucky there. But it would be easy just to gather it up a little bit more if you needed to if it wasn't quite fitting perfectly. I didn't get lucky, I worked it out. <laughs> I think um, with any projects like this, when you're making it up as you go along, you, the first one, you work out the gist of it. Second one, you iron out a few more wrinkles. By the time I make, make the third one, I'll know what I'm doing. Okay, let's just lose the end of that thread in there. Um, so there we go there's my little my cute little pot <laughs> pouch whatever you want to call it um, I think I feel like I want another little white button I thought I was going to use a wooden one but I don't like the look of that I want something white I mean, it doesn't have to be a button there at all I could just put the popper and just leave the button off, button out for now I might do that for now so I just need to um, put the put the popper on there and I'm just going to do a blanket stitch around the bottom and that'll be it so I think I'm, I'm going to stop the video now I'll finish this off camera and take um, a couple of pictures just so you can see but yeah they're fun little things um, and you could definitely vary this up you could you could definitely just like put and make it a hanger a hanger ball you could just you know put a little loop on it a handle on it so you could hang it instead if you wanted um and it would really be fun to put a little tassel or bead or something on the bottom uh, hang them from a tree or whatever yeah I'm, i just think they're really cute little things i like making little things there we go let's let's see if we can make your thumbnail yo-yo pouches <laughs> that's it for me you can see it's dark outside now it took me a lot longer than i thought it was going to what with sewing everything on three times <laughs> anyway i hope you enjoyed that and uh, and maybe it gave you some ideas i think it might be one of those things that other people will have to go out and do a much better job than me <laughs> it's just giving you the idea really um so thank you very much for joining me today i hope you enjoyed that and i will see you again really soon bye